This is the Phuket News Hour with Tim Shaw. Join the conversation on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Phuket Live Radio. Hello and welcome to the program. The Cocktail murder trial continues, but a UK judge has said no to the release of a UK police report to the defence team at the decision of the court that it may impede future joint investigations between the UK and Royal Thai Police. We cross to Cambodia, where the Khmer Rouge Tribunal will continue to the United States to follow the report of two journalists that were shot and killed live on air. Trafficked ivory destroyed in Bangkok and Vietnam talks of abolishing certain crimes from the death penalty. All this and more here on the Phuket News Hour across to the Phuket News Centre for the latest local and national news. And we'll catch up with the BBC with the world headlines. All this and more on the Phuket News Hour brought to you by the Kids Club Phuket. The news you need to know. This is the Phuket News Hour with Tim Shaw. Some of the stories making news in the ASEAN region. The Bangkok Post is reporting from London that two Myanmar workers on trial for the murder of the two British tourists on Gok Tao should not be given access to a confidential British police report about the case. The two Myanmar men, both aged 22, risked the death penalty if found guilty of murdering Hannah Witheridge, 23, and David Miller, 24, in September last year on the Suratani province island of Gok The allegations caused disquiet in Britain in a ruling handed down in London this week. High Court Judge Nicholas Green said the misgivings were such Prime Minister Prayut Chanacha and his British counterpart David Cameron discussed the matter. The two leaders agreed that Britain's Metropolitan Police would send a team to Thailand to conduct an independent inquiry. However, as it is British policy not to assist foreign police forces in death penalty cases, the scope of the mission was to observe and record the Thai police investigation. Thai police cooperated fully under the pre-agreed condition that the British team's final report would be shared only with the Witheridge and Miller families. But the two murder suspects, who have been on trial since early July, applied to the court to hand over the report, arguing that it might be of use to their defence case. The Metropolitan Police opposed their application, arguing that disclosure would impede the force's ability to enter into cooperation agreements with foreign authorities in the future. Having seen the full report, the judge ruled that the interests of the police outweighed those of the suspects. The trial of the two Myanmar workers continues on Koh Samui and as developments take place there we'll bring that to you here on the Phuket News Hour. More news on the way here on a difficult day where two television journalists were shot and killed live on air and we'll bring you that report from ABC News further into the program. You're listening to the Phuket News Hour. Miss something? No problem. Listen to the Phuket News Hour any time of the day. Programs posted daily on the phuketnews.com slash radio and on our Facebook page, Phuket Live Radio. Looking to Bangkok, the United States and international wildlife protection organisations have applauded Bangkok's destruction of 2.2 tonnes of confiscated ivory as the government steps up its fight against trafficked ivory. In a ceremony presided over by Thai Prime Minister Prayut Chanacha, 2,155 kilograms of raw tusks and carved trinkets were fed into an industrial rock crusher before being incinerated. It marked the first time the kingdom has taken steps to destroy part of its stockpile of seized illegal ivory. The contraband was estimated to be worth more than 100 million baht. That story from the Bangkok Post. Crossing now to Hanoi, the Vietnam News is reporting that talk of abolishing the death penalty for several crimes continued to divide the National Assembly deputies as they discussed the draft criminal code. Among the crimes some believe should be dropped from the draft list for capital punishment were robbery, destroying important works and war crimes. Crimes that should be added to the list include embezzlement, taking bribes and producing and trading fake medicines. The session was held on the last day of a three-day meeting in Hanoi. Uh, Representatives from the southern province said the purpose of law enforcement was not to punish but to educate. According to delegates, quote, from my years of working on death penalty cases, there has been no proof that the death penalty can help to reduce crimes. The chairman of the NA Justice Committee said that besides the already draft 
abolition of seven out of 22 categories of crime attracting the death penalty. Some deputies have also proposed to abolish the death penalty for economic crimes. That story from Hanoi, the Vietnam News. A story from VOA News, which I'll post on Facebook.com, the Phuket News, is about Chinese fishermen sailing closer to the coast of the Western Philippines. And according to Beijing, military forces consolidate their position in the adjacent South China Sea. Officials in the Philippines say they are finding Chinese poachers in what is clearly their territorial waters. This report from the Voice of America. The Philippine Maritime Police patrol the waters around Palawan. They are on the lookout for foreign poachers like the ones that operated this vessel now docked at the police station. Captain Philip Soares explains how the boat was apprehended. We saw that it's a different. We saw that this vessel is, is like so dip, dip, very different to the our local vessel. So we get closer and then we identified that it is a Vietnamese vessel uh, coming here in the Philippine territory to conduct illegal fishing. Soares says thanks to the police force's small fleet of speedboats, these poachers cannot easily get away. That report from Voice of America, and I'll post that vision on Facebook.com, the Phuket News and Phuket Live Radio. Some of the stories making news in the ASEAN region. More news on the way here on the News Hour. Your daily news fix, Monday to Friday at 11am, only on Live 89.5. The Phuket News Hour brought to you by the Kids Club Phuket, opposite Jung Salong, open from 10 a.m. to 9 p.m., seven days a week, a great place for the kids to play. Put this in your diary. Sunday, September the 6th, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m., the Kids Club Phuket, Day of Knowledge. Join us for a fun information and entertainment afternoon and evening organised by the Phuket Mummies Club on Sunday the 6th of September starting at 4pm. Browse the information booths between 4 and 5pm and learn more about what the following groups and businesses have on offer for your children. Representatives will be on hand from Jujube, Indigo Kids International Preschool, Oasis Ed Phuket, Kids Planet and Happy Baby. From 5pm to 7pm, entertainment will include performances by dancers, acrobats, interactive games, fun contests and other activities for your children. Entry charges of 350 baht per child and 100 baht adults will entitle you to a day entry ticket to the Kids Club plus all the entertainment. So come along early, enjoy the fun-filled day for all the family, the Day of Knowledge, Sunday, September the 6th, 4pm to 7pm, where the Kids Club Phuket, opposite Jung Salong, underground parking, open seven days a week. The stuff you need to know. 60 minutes of news on the Phuket News Hour with Tim Shaw. Disturbing news from the United States. A television crew doing a live television cross at 6.45 a.m. in the morning were approached by a lone gunman who opened fire whilst the reporter was talking to a guest. The gunman killed the reporter live on air, also shot and killed the cameraman and also injured the interviewee. Alison Parker, 24, the reporter, was heard screaming as the gunman opened fire. The gunman shot cameraman Adam Ward, 27, both from WDBJ7 Live Television in Roanoke in Virginia. We'll cross to the ABC America for this report and a warning. The content of this report is quite disturbing. Vester Lee Flanagan, who was also known on air as Bryce Williams, had reportedly claimed the recent massacre of black churchgoers in South Carolina had sent him over the edge, but his anger had been building for some time. ABC News in the U.S. reports they received a 23-page manifesto from a man claiming to be Bryce Williams just hours before the on-air shooting. In the statement, he describes himself as a human powder keg just waiting to go boom. He also makes references to other mass shooters, expressing admiration for the man behind the 2007 Virginia Tech massacre, and reveals he put down a deposit for a gun two days after the Charleston shooting in June. The 41-year-old was a former reporter for WDBJ-TV in Virginia, where slain reporter Allison Parker and cameraman Adam Ward also worked. Following the shooting, Flanagan posted a graphic video of the incident to social media and, in a series of tweets, accused his former colleagues of racial discrimination. His accounts have since been suspended. But the general manager at WDBJ described him as angry and unhappy. Vester was an unhappy man. 
He quickly um, gathered a reputation as someone who was difficult to work with. He was um, sort of looking out for people to uh, say things that he could take offense to. Flanagan was fired after a complaint filed against the station was dismissed. He had also sued a former employer at a Florida TV station for alleged racial discrimination 15 years ago. On Wednesday afternoon, Flanagan was found by Virginia State Police in his car with a self-inflicted gunshot wound. He later died of his injuries. That report from ABC America. So what we know is that the gunman was a former employee of the television station. He targeted the reporter and the cameraman during a live television cross. 39 journalists around the world have died this year in the course of their duty and these two young reporter journalists are added to that list. Rest in peace to those that have lost their lives and let the world take a moment to think about the use of guns, not only around the world, but particularly in the United States. More news on the way. This is the Phuket News Hour. Today's important stories and the island's best music. This is the Phuket News Hour with Tim Shaw. Moving to Phnom Penh, the Cambodian Times is reporting that the Khmer Tribunal vows to press on with trials after Ieng Turith's death. The death of Leng Turing will not affect the proceedings of the Cambodian Tribunal trying other senior members of the former Khmer Rouge regime for alleged international law violations and crimes committed during the country's genocide. Chara Revet with this report. Ian Tariff, a former Minister of Social Affairs in the Khmer Rouge who was indicted on charges of genocide, crimes against humanity and grave breaches of the Geneva Conventions of 1949, was the murderous regime most powerful woman. She died on Saturday in Western Cambodia's Palin province at the age of 83. A press officer of the extraordinary chambers in the courts of Cambodia, also known as the Khmer Rouge Tribunal, reported that he was waiting to hear from Ieng Trif's family as well as her co-prosecutors for confirmation of cause of death. The court will examine her case with pre-trial chamber and decide in successive stages of what to do after they obtain reports from the co-prosecutors who are monitoring the status of her death. The United Nations-backed Cambodian court was formed in 2006 to prosecute Khmer Rouge leaders responsible for the deaths of nearly 2 million Cambodians died of starvation, exhaustion, forced labour and execution during the communist regime that ruled Cambodia from 1975 to 1979. Chara Revit with that report from the Cambodian Times and it is good news to know that the tribunal will continue and those guilty of those heinous crimes during the regime of Pol Pot will be brought to trial and their evidence heard and their guilt proven or denied. More news on the way. This is the Phuket News Hour. Your daily news fix, Monday to Friday at 11am, only on Live 89.5. That's the program for today. Thank you for your company. The Phuket News Hour, produced and presented by Tim Shaw, Associate Producer Chara Revit, with the resources of CNN, The Voice of America, ABC, The Phuket News Centre and The World Wide Web. If you'd like to catch the podcast highlights, go to phuketliveradio.com and check out facebook.com, The Phuket News Give us your comments on the program here on Live 89.5. The Phuket News Hour, proudly brought to you by the Kids Club Phuket, opposite Jung Salong, open 10am to 9pm, seven days a week. Have a great remainder of the day. Until we speak again, bye for now. This is the Phuket News Hour with Tim Shaw. Join the conversation on our Facebook page, facebook.com slash Phuket Live Radio.